All right. So, yeah. So, obviously, we're talking about the rebranded WVD uh, side of things, right? So, Azure Virtual Desktop, try to get that uh, burned into your head, uh, switching the name um, on you. So, essentially, you know, Shane touched on a lot of good subjects. We barely mentioned because we're really not focusing on the on-prem Citrix side of the house. That's the traditional side. I will say that when, when with a lot of discussions, when it goes towards, oh, you're going to use ABD or other DAS solutions, uh, Citrix, Citrix is so complex. It's all these things you got to do. They're always focusing on the traditional Citrix on-prem. So I always right. have to check the conversation and take it back and, and say, hey, we got to focus on the Citrix cloud side of things, right? Because there's all kinds of things you can do with Citrix and everybody's used to the traditional, but really this kind of conversation in the webinar today was you know that azure standard service piece is big that's the more apples to apples to what we're talking about here uh with with avd native as well as nerdio on top of AD, avd so essentially just this architecture slide here just want to give you a little visual this is our nice little slick we got a jump start that we help customers out with in, in this world um, and essentially we've created this little slide as our own we we, we dub it the choice solutions 0365 or m365 experience um, so a little bit different uh, than, than the microsoft flavor of this but essentially it gives you an idea kind of how it breaks down right you got vnets uh, for your for your you know your host your session host you got your fs logic your storage account files um, you, you know you got your azure ad and your tenant stuff and the endpoints you got to have your Azure AD connect something syncing up here to Azure Active Directory. You got to have a tenant up and running. Um, you know they're they're constantly doing more things to where now they got a tech preview where you can potentially join session host to just Azure AD and use native. Um, but all that's tech preview. So that's one of the things I'm going to touch on as well is that Microsoft is playing catch up, but they're playing catch up fast, right? They're they're adding in new features constantly on a monthly basis. Um, and, and really trying to do do their best to catch up on this stuff. So, and then you got your control plane. So both of these are paths. So obviously you got your RD web gateway, those kind of things, the broker, the load balancing, all that is something you don't think about. The licensing, uh, similar to the Citrus Cloud situation, right? So this is kind of the standard architecture um, for Azure AD in general. And just to kind of show you, it's really for Azure, for ABD native, it's very simplistic, right? So just a screenshot here, but I'll jump into this. Essentially, this is all it is, right? In the portal, which we're lucky to have this now, we, we didn't have this before the spring release. Really, we're talking about the spring release because previous to that, it was called the fall release. If you ever played with that, it was mainly oh, PowerShell. Power yeah. yeah, it was terrible. So at least we got something in the portal now and they got this nice little landing page now, which they never had before. This was in one of the recent updates as well. But essentially this is all it is, right? So you got your host pools, your app groups, your workspaces and, and users, um, and obviously insights uh, for monitoring, but uh, it's pretty simplistic from, from that standpoint. So we're, we'll jump into that, the actual portal in a little bit, just to show you that for a quick minute, because that's really all it takes <laughs> to show that if you haven't seen it. Um, but basically, I'm just highlighting a few of the features and functionality. Uh, as Shane said, that we're not touching on everything, and we, and we can't. We'd, have, we'd need three hours to do that. But really, some of the ones that just came into my head as we're doing this is, is endpo endpoint support now. Uh, if you were in the early days of WVD, they had hardly anything. Now they're pretty good about that, right? They're pretty across the board. They might not have everything Citrix has from a CWA uh, workspace app. But they got Windows, Web, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and then they work with thin client, client manufacturers like iGel is a big one for us on the partner landscape uh, to do the Linux piece, right? So protocol support, you're going to see things different there. This stuff we're talking about all the time, right? RDP, it's basically TCP. They now have short path and tech preview, but, you know, that gives you that UDP. But I want to tell you, that's very different from the Citrix. Citrix created a whole new protocol, EDT where it does them in parallel, tries UDP, falls back to TCP, figures out the conditions, does not need direct line of sight. That's key here. This one, to get UDP and uh, AVD, you need direct line of sight, which is an additional cost from uh, like a point to site from a home or, or whatever. With everybody working remote these days in COVID, this is, this is an additional cost to even get this. So it works differently, even though it gives you that possibility. It needs direct line of sight with, with the endpoint and Azure. 
uh, paths, just like the Citrix side of the world, Citrix Cloud. It's got the, uh, you know, those components I mentioned, the Azure portal support, the spring release. Thank God we got the portal experience now. It's got some features comparatively to Citrix where they're playing catch up on the screen capture protection is one of them. They don't have the anti key logging, but they got the capture protection. Uh, obviously, monitor insight sentinel. Um, you know, they, they've now got this all tech preview and running GA actually for the monitor. I think uh, it's all additional costs, of course, everything Azure's additional costs. Uh, App Attach, when you get into that, the, the, that's in the portal now. Um, a Defender for endpoint integration with MS uh, for the multi session stuff, right? They 50 from concurrent sessions you can manage on a multi session uh, session host, right? Teams optimization. Not near as nice as the Citrix piece here. Citrix did a lot of development on the virtual channels for HDX, Teams optimization. Yeah, this one's a little bit hokey comparatively. Believe it or not, my, Citrix has done a better job, in my opinion, on the Teams optimization than Microsoft's done in their AVD product. Yeah. Um, and then the profile and office container managing, you only know, got FS Logic, it's smoking good, right? So real quick on the on the demo stuff. So let me, uh, let me quick get out of here. I'm going to jump in here. So what I was mentioning here on the on the on your portal, you know, you're familiar with this. Really, just to show you a couple things from a manual. Everything you do for AVD is manual, right? So that's why we're talking to our our partner. Uh, we usually go to go to bat with Nerdio as our as our third party, because literally everything you do is is very manual and simplistic in the portal here, right? So you got the concept of, of essentially host pools. I got a validation pool, a couple other pools. That I've created with uh, with Nerdio um, from that tool, and, and in there, really, what you got to is your to to compare to policies on the Citrix side. You just have RDP stuff, right? You can control RDP capability and policy for device redirection. Some of the things, if you're familiar with Citrix, you got all that Citrix policies, and it's, they got a very robust policy engine for many, many, many things, right? Not near as many here. Basically, on your RDP stuff, some redirection. Those kind of things, some basic stuff here, your display sessions, and they put it all together and they make a file basically that they're delivering you with the Windows desktop client for, or the Azure desktop client, they call it now, um, for this, right? So really it's in here and your host pool, it's just RDP properties. Um, and, and the concept of host pools like your machine catalogs, right? Application groups go along with or, or, uh, essentially where you'd be like your delivery groups in the Citrix world. So just to compare that, you know, that's essentially all you're doing here is, is permissions. Uh, you're doing, in this case, applications. If I had an application on one of these, I got like Edge. Uh, I think on this one, yep. So Edge and you got your assignments. Pretty, that's it, right? You got your assignments and then you got workspace, which is like Citrus workspace. This is where you go in, you log in with the, you know, with the client here. Um, the client refreshes your workspace. In, in the remote desktop client, it pulls it up here. So this is like comparatively to the Citrix workspace, uh, you know, control plane is, or access plane as far as that goes, right? And that's it, right? Uh, that's pretty much it from that standpoint. So it's pretty easy. I can breathe, you know, burn through that pretty quick, right? So we get back yeah. to where we're going with that. So the licensing, you get it in, a, in, a, in various ways, right? I'm not gonna go through all these, there you go. So if you have one of these packages, they made it nice and neat, you get it with it, you don't get the consumption cost with it, so don't let them fool you. Um, you just get the entitlement to use it at that Linux compute rate type thing that Shane had mentioned earlier, where you say you already have licenses. Well, that's basically giving you that that Linux compute rate, um, saying you're, you know, you already got the entitlement to use it. Yeah, it's like a 60, 70 percent discount. On the, yeah, it's on huge, the right? It's, yeah, it's pretty don't ever forget. Don't ever forget that, right? And then same with the Windows Server per user per device RDS Cal license. With active software insurance, you get it. And the big new one here is kind of like this, because uh, I got customers that have asked about it from a SaaS standpoint. For external non-employee users now, you can use, you can actually buy this outside of the other entitlements in the M3 and, uh, and all those other packages. That's brand new as of this month. Uh, this pay it, pay you per user per month fee, right? Yeah, so that that's like competitive to like Citrix with the monthly on the CVAD subscription for sure. And, yep. But I like that that one piece you had there. That is no no commitment, no payment until December. That's a pretty big. Yeah, they got a uh, promo going on. Yeah, I know, man. Saw that big promo. 
So if you yeah. need that for like non-employee type users, you know, they got that option there now, at least before you couldn't do it at all. Like if you had not users that weren't part of your organization, you could not deliver this to them technically by license. Uh, pros and cons, uh, you know, they're, they're adding features of functionality fast and furious. Obviously COVID kicked them in the butt and got that moving, right? But before that, it was kind of stagnant. It wasn't really much. Um, titlements, many packages, licensing, very simple, sim the simplicity there comparatively to the Citrix side of the house where you got all kinds of things to sort through. We can help with that, of course, but there's a lot to think about. Um, the Azure portal, Azure AD, you know, the familiarity for most Azure admins is there. It's PaaS only, uh, none of the on-prem stuff that Citrix can give you. Um, uh, so there's no additional options to even think about from that standpoint. They have FS Logics now, man, robust profile management solution there at least. They are putting a lot of development into it, unfortunately, from their side, but it was a solid product going in. It's pretty much the same as it was when they bought it, yeah. but FS Logics is awesome, right? Uh, fairly broad endpoint support now, thank goodness. At one point, they didn't even have mobile support, <laughs> and many built RBAC controls, and, and some of the cons, not as mature. Obviously, Citrix has been doing a long time, lack of features, uh, again, has only, <laughs> so there's no additional <laughs> options. So you're all in Azure, right? If you're going AVD native, all in Azure, that's that's No on-prem workloads. On-prem, no no AWS as a fallback. It's, it's your Azure at that point. Um, no additional bells and whistles really other than FS Logics. The monitoring is an add-on no matter how you write it up, um, whereas Citrix has the basic monitoring piece included. Uh, no, no federation support right now. Another preview one that just came out is it being able to use, yes, it seems a little weird going backwards, but ADFS to do what Citrix has been doing nicely for quite some time now with federation services. 